Are dirt bike riders second class citizens? Are we seen by society as a filthy bunch of reprobates? Well, hell yeah. Biggest bunch of reprobates I've ever seen. Oh my God. Should we expect mediocre quality when it comes to our helmets, boots, and riding gear? I don't think so. So often we have seen a small brand that is passionate about riding produce a great range of products, but once successful, they are often purchased by larger businesses who are driven far more by profit instead of quality or consumer safety. In some cases, they become multinational umbrella corporations where the motorbike products are just a tiny sideline of their overall business model. This seems to be the point in time when quality and safety are rarely given another thought. Lately, we have been highlighting safety concerns of riding gear. Some brands are claiming that their knee guards are knee braces, and some of the more expensive helmet brands have had primary brackets that easily rust, sometimes to the point of failure. The responses to our articles and videos has been very interesting. A surprising number of riders say, why bother complaining? It's an expensive sport and this is just another expense. Others thought we were being too harsh on the manufacturers and that getting two years out of a helmet before it fails is a reasonable timeline. Others say, why bother complaining at all? As it's not going to achieve a thing. We were intrigued by these responses the public has a pretty poor perception of motorcycle riders, especially dirt riders. Has this attitude infected us? Do we honestly think we don't deserve any better? Or are we simply just apathetic? We just accept that certain manufacturers can save a few cents on each product by using inferior manufacturing methods that don't meet any required standards. Some of you may remember the name Ralph Nader. In the 1960s, the safety record of the automobile industry in the United States was aberrant. And Ralph set about highlighting all the problems while calling for reform. His voice caused such a stir that General Motors illegally tapped his phone, had him followed, and hired prostitutes to try to catch him in a compromising situation. Although we could only wish for this type of notoriety, maybe it's time we had a similar movement in the motorcycle world. Should we be demanding better quality and safety from motorcycle gear? Or should we just accept things the way they are? It's only life and limb that's on the line. Often people say, vote with your wallet. Let us know if you prefer to root through the bargain racks of your local dealership for the cheapest gear you can buy, or are you the type of person that researches products extensively before buying and only support companies that are creating quality products? We would love to know.